What's up, rock stars? It's Rox, and I am coming to you today with a just a real short review on the new edition store, you guys. But you know what? It's Sunday. Y'all already know what time it is. Jesus love me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Hey, hallelujah. Y'all, I, I was sitting in this car and I was trying to think of something to sing. And with everything that's been going on in the world these last couple of days, I was like, you know what? Even though we got so much mayhem down here, you know what? God is still on the throne, right? And uh, we just going to turn to him because Jesus does still love us. But I'm not going to preach in here today, y'all, because that's not what I'm here for. <laughs> I am here to talk about the new edition story, which just in short, um, I loved it. I thought it was very, very well done. So Candy Girl came out, I believe, in 1983. And um, I can remember just being really excited about it because, you know, coming off the Jackson 5 and everything, they didn't really have any young boy groups out like then. They, like, it was not, it was, that was not what they were doing at the time. So when New Edition came out, it was this boom of excitement of black young girls because, first of all, we all thought they were cute. We all thought they dressed fresh. I can remember they were uh, performing down at the, um, the down by USC where the Rose Garden was. For you guys that are familiar with Los Angeles, down at the uh, museum of science down there and I remember my mom took me and a couple of other friends of mine and you guys don't even understand the amount of screaming that was out there and they were so tiny I actually thought at the time that I was older than them but um I wasn't but yeah it was just like amazing to see these young boys with these great voices I mean we you know it was like the beginning of something big, and you could tell. And then as time went on, I think when Any Heartbreak came out, you know, I was right in high school, and uh, that Any Heartbreak album is a classic, even to this day. They just had some really good songs. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. The first third of the movie was them trying to get discovered, right? We all know that Bobby Brown was the one that started the group. I thought they did an excellent job casting the kids. When you look at the pictures of the kids when they were younger, and then you look at this cast of kids I was just like they did such a good job what about the kid from Stranger Things that was um playing um he was playing Ricky Bell right so talented so ta no was he playing Ricky Bell or was he playing Ralph child anyway I was like that little kid from Stranger Things is gonna do big things actually I hope it all happens for all of those little kids because like I said I felt like they really pulled it off well just seeing them starting the projects and meeting with their manager at the time the way that they really did artist development back then, which is such a lost art today. And that's the reason why so many of these artists today, you know, are either here today, gone tomorrow, or crash and burn on their own because they don't know how to handle anything. They don't have any sacrifice. They've been on the internet, you know, on YouTube or something like that, that were like instantly discovered and just thrown in front of a stage, okay, with a microphone and not much else behind it. So <clears throat> it was good to see the preparation and the dedication back then of artists um, and then for them to have such good guidance, not necessarily any good money, not necessarily any good business smarts, but the guidance of their manager I thought was just awesome to see and just him instilling in them that you guys are a group you are a team okay everybody moves as one you can't outshine the other I mean we went on to see that that didn't happen but I thought that that was really cool that he was able to put that in them and that's probably why today they're still able to travel and perform together because it's all about the foundation y'all all about the foundation so the first third of the movie like I said was the children when they were trying to get discovered them getting their them traveling all over the world um and performing 
And we also saw how they, you know, like I said, lack of business sense, them being from poor families who are desperate for money, basically, no men in the home, just their moms, them being extremely taken advantage of. It just was such a terrible thing because it was just happening over and over again to see these moms like fussing and frustrated with their management, whether or not it was... um the original manager, I can't even think of his name right now, or um, when they went on to perform with, um, when they got the studio deal, and that guy was taking advantage of them, you know, so that was really frustrating to see, but I, it's a reality. These new these groups, when they first get started, you know, there were many record labels that was just taking advantage of them. I thought that the acting was awesome, even of the mothers. I thought La Lala has become a really good actress. And I think that this was probably the best that I have ever seen her act. <laughs> because she was really like one of them kind of moms. I mean, they all were. They were all were a certain kind of mom that you can remember from the neighborhood. But she was she was the one that was just like... I really enjoyed her character. And I thought there were some really good scenes, especially when the mothers would get to arguing and everything. And when Lala looked at the other mother and was just like, who put you in charge anyway? <laughs> I was cracking up. So that was the first third of the movie. So the first third of the movie was like the rise, okay? Them trying to get to stardom. The second part of the movie was definitely them. They had arrived. They were now teenagers. Like I said, they were about to do any heartbreak. This is where we saw the out-of-control egos of um, Bobby Brown, how he kind of self destructed himself they had to put him out the group even though they you know it was obvious they did not want to do it but they knew what they had to do uh this is when they got their big record deal with mca uh well they were uh under another label under mca and again got taken advantage of and i know there's some discrepancies i've seen people talking about like i didn't i have known the story of new edition i think up until the second part of the movie we had all pretty much heard those stories um and like i said i know there's some discrepancies but I still don't know if there were they were big enough where we felt like it threw the you know threw the rhythm of the movie off but the second part was really where you saw them enjoying their fame okay not necessarily their money again again the moms were taken advantage of the boys were taken advantage of no lawyers around not quite sure why nobody ever thought to hire a lawyer but um slowly towards the end of the second um episode they were getting money but again the extreme amount of fame that new edition had it absolutely made no sense that they they didn't have even more money than that okay but they were able to move their family out the hood you start to see how um just a classic story of how the families begin to rely on these boys and you could just see that it was getting so out of control that it wasn't going to last much longer because between bobby brown who even to this day probably is still a very large personality okay he's probably slowed down quite a bit because you know all the things that have happened to him but uh there was really no way of taming bobby brown it was good to see that even with all of the stuff that bobby brown put them through you know in the end they're still together so that was the second part the second part was the leveling off of the fame and them really being known as robbie bobby ricky mike ralph and then of course the addition of johnny johnny gill who i always thought was a little bit of a strange um addition but he still worked but when you really think of new addition you still kind of thought of the other boys but um johnny gill came in and he, like i like they said in the movie he was able to usher them into a more mature spot and we all know that any heartbreak was the palm album oh my god then when we moved on to the third part of the movie this was the decline okay this was them breaking off so now we had New Edition that had broken up into BBD, Ralph Tresvant going on solo, Bobby Brown going solo. And um, what was very interesting to see was the whole Michael Bivens thing and how he really was the only one that was channeling, like knowing like this music thing might not last long. Okay, I need to do something else. And how he just had the eye for business and was able to pick up the artists. Okay, ABC. Another bad creation. I was like, I can't believe I'm a grown-ass woman dancing to these little kids, you know, music. Between Boys and Men and B ABC. And didn't he have another group as well? I couldn't think of it. But anyway, you know, it was good to see that Michael Bivens was just always thinking of a bigger picture. And, you know, it might have made him a bit of an asshole, but 
he he had it. But like I said, in the third part, this, this was the decline. The egos was out of control. They were spending money like crazy. They didn't have it. They got back together for that Coming Home album, which was also a <laughs> bomb-ass album. I thought it was interesting that they did not um, add Puffy to the to the mix at all because you guys know that was a Puffy album. And I remember them even getting screwed by Puffy... Um, Puffy Combs. That part was interesting that they left that out. I'm not quite sure why. They got back together. They all had issues now. Okay, Ralph was going through a thing with his girlfriend, you know, slash baby mama for years and years and years. Bobby Brown had a drug and alcohol problem. Ricky Bell had a drug and alcohol back problem that we absolutely knew. I didn't know anything about that. I did know about Ronnie DeVoe going back and selling real estate in Atlanta because when we first moved to Atlanta, he was actually doing very well selling property out there. Um, and I thought that was good of Ronnie DeVoe. I mean, you just got to do what you got to do, damn it. These bills ain't going to pay themselves. Got to get to work. Come up with a plan B. Johnny Gill, you know, he was able to get himself together and get get with LSG and kind of move on to the next chapter. But, um, you know, we were just seeing how the decline kind of made them realize what was important. And I was just really, really touched that in the end, when Ronnie DeVoe finally was getting married, you know, the boys were all able to come back together and just kind of realize that even though with all the bullshit that we've been through, you know, that we brothers and we here. And those kind of stories are always just touching to see. It was good. I really would have liked to have seen it before parts. I feel like that third part, probably they was... First of all, it was a lot of performances, and not just little clips. I mean, they performed the whole thing. That was another thing. The costuming was great. I mean, they took the time to make sure that everybody looked and, and sounded exactly like how they did back in the to in the day. I saw that the musical producers was like Babyface and Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis and, of course, all the guys. And so you could tell that they really spent money and time on making sure that they got this story accurate. And I was just so proud of BET, okay? Because we know how these things can go. <coughs> Aaliyah. That wasn't on BET. But, uh, and this also should let people know that when they do these bio biopics or biopics, however you say it, I never can figure it out. That the music, when you're doing something on a, on a group or a musician, an artist, a singer, you have to have the music. If you don't have the music, it don't work. It does not work. Nobody wants to hear the story without all of the elements to the story. And the music is the biggest part. A lot of times, at the end, when they were all able to come together, and then when they showed that BET 25th um, anniversary special, I can remember that like it was yesterday. And that's when you knew that them boys still had it. They got up there, they turned that stage out. And it was so cool to see that they pretty much recreated. It was almost like you were watching them perform on that stage, the actual group. For that BT, I mean, they spent so much time getting. I thought, I thought they all did well, even as grown new edition members. All of the actors that represented was, they were awesome. They did so so well. They, it's too late for them to be nominated for any kind of like awards um, th this season. For like NAACP and all that. I don't know if they'll make it onto the NAACP awards for next year. Because it's so early this year that people probably will have forgotten about it by then. But it's too bad because the boys deserve to be recognized for the acting that they did in this movie. So <clears throat> that's it you guys. I just kind of wanted to come on here and talk about it. Because I was just all emotional. Because it brought back so many good memories you guys. It brought back so many good memories. And um, even when they're performing live now, you know, it's still there. They still have it. And then when you, as grown men, and you've been through so much, and you just kind of can recognize what's what now, it's just a good story. It was a good story to see and to listen, okay? The saddest part of, the, of their story, of course, is Bobby Brown, because I don't think people understand the how big he was. When we were watching it, my daughter was like, is that Bobby Brown? Like, Bobby Brown, Whitney Houston's Bobby Brown? I was like, yes. You guys don't know how big Bobby Brown was, like the new generation, and it's sad that Jada knows all of New Edition's song. Like, she loves that Any Heartbreak album, but she didn't know nothing about Bobby Brown because Bobby Brown's image, you know, much of it on his own doing and also because of others doing. But it's so bad now that you can't even appreciate what he actually did. He has accomplished so much. Ten times platinum? That's a diamond album? I mean, he was the man. And um, to see him now, which is kind of like a broken, broken down version of his older self is... 
sometimes it's disheartening. So that's why it's good to see that he wasn't always like that and that he really did have it in him to be a success. So that's it, you guys. I got to get off of here because I'm headed to the airport. But I wanted to just come on and talk about the show. You guys tell me what you thought about all three of the uh, the parts. What did you think about the acting? What did you think about the singing? What did you think about the choreography? What did you think about the costuming, the setting? Okay, what did you think about the pace of the movie? I want you guys to leave all of that in the bottom bar below i ain't said it like that in a long time huh? <laughs> all right you guys let me get off of here i haven't even watched scandal or how to get away with murder i'm gonna try to watch it on a plane and then i will get the review up probably tomorrow tomorrow's gonna be one of them hellish days i'm gonna be trying to get real housewives of atlanta up and everything you guys so y'all just stick with me i'm working on it i ain't forgot about my rock stars out there but let me get off of here you guys make sure you rate comment and subscribe to the channel i'm it's rocks the channel's for it's rocks and everything else i do would be in the bottom bar all right. All right. So I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. I plan on doing the same. Till next time, rock stars. Bye.